Hey guys, welcome back to Homestead Prepping and Survival. Yep, it's just about dark. The babies or whatever, the teenagers haven't went quite to roost yet. They're starting. I finished cutting that stump down that my son-in-law started. And since I've cleared the trail, not the property line, but the trail around the out, outer, outer edge of the property... I drove my truck all the way around. I didn't run through the middle trails. Now it's not cleared enough for that. But drove my truck all the way around. I think it's the first time I've ever driven a full size vehicle through there. So it only had one little old bitty branch weed hit the mirror on my truck. No big deal. I was crawling anyway. But did good. Now, at least if I can drive it, I can walk it, right? Y'all come walk with me. We'll uh, get some exercise in and we'll run the pistol rifle course and get some training in and have fun all at the same time. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, add the rest of the video in here and uh, probably put this thing out for Wednesday. I'm not going to do it for Tuesday, but... Uh, working on another one for thursday so i hope i can get that one completed by thursday so y'all be good remember the two things i always tell you jesus loves you and so do i y'all be safe be prepared well i put the y on there that's about as fast as I open that valve, usually for just the chicken. So like say, if something breaks, bust, whatever, they knock their thing over and it's constantly running until I get home, which has happened once or twice. My well doesn't run constant all day long. It'll run a little bit and shut off. It'll run a little bit. At least it's not wide open, you know. But um, anyway, I got to thinking, softened the ground up there where I was digging the augers for the telephone poles. Why not let it fill this little ditch up that I'm trying to dig for the water line to go on to the other side of the barn. So I'm going to let it run for a little bit and uh, maybe soften the ground just a little bit because it's so dry. It's been at least six weeks, maybe seven or eight since we've gotten rain and this ground is hard as a slab of concrete. So especially when digging by hand so i'm gonna let it run until that little ditch fills up anyway and maybe i could get it down deeper because i need to dig right here where i left the stub sticking out in the ground and get that pipe exposed so i can add to it and continue running it and it's going to run out and over to that side of the mini barn and up to the other corner and i'm gonna put a faucet there got all the pipe and everything i need to do it it's just a matter of getting it done so Anyway, I was here putting that wire on and adjusting the water pressure back on that cutoff valve. And this little rooster right here has just been, he keeps most of them up on their roost. They get down, he'll grab one of them, trying to mount them. He don't know what he's doing yet and they ain't got a clue. So they stay up on the roost and I actually let the first pin out today. Little mama and the other three hens and then the, the other Blue Orphingtons and wine dots out to scratch and you know move around a little bit because they were mostly all on the ground yesterday and today. So I'm gonna let them scratch a little bit and I covered up the pipe where I did the repair. It was dry as a bone over there. So anyway, I'm gonna let them run a little bit and see if they don't go to roost. They were all up on the top shelf in there yesterday, which is 11 of them. And um, these over here in this pen, all but one was up on the top uh, nesting rack. So I think I need to put a spacer between the nesting rack and the wall and kind of get that top shelf away from the wall about two or three inches to make it more comfortable for them. Full size like that, a lot of them don't turn around, but there's room for them too. It's just puts their tail up against that metal so I may make that adjustment one day but either way I'm gonna let this water run for a little bit 
and uh, <laughs> he grabbed one of them and just pulled a feather out and didn't try to mount, just grabbed them. And I went in there and went to kick his butt across that room to show him he ain't the only one that can be pick, uh, picking on folks. And, uh, <laughs> sorry about the hand. He got up on the roost with them. So, sometimes they just got to learn a lesson. They got to stop picking on them. But they're not ready to come out and go back together yet. So, maybe another day or two. Let these run a little bit, get some exercise. I was playing with Sparky. He's up there enjoying his toy. Bought it quite a few days ago. <laughs> All right, the little glider plane thing is coming back. And uh, I took the mower out. Both front tires have always leaked real slow. So one of them didn't come loose off the rim on one side. So I went ahead and got my green slime out and put a bunch in both front tires and pumped them back up got it back on the rim and then i rode around the range and the trails all the way through the woods and around knocking down the little previous that pops up and the um little pine trees and all that stuff that's in the trail of where i cleared just kind of cleaning it up a little bit hunting season starts uh, very soon so we I've showed y'all a picture at the end of the last video there's some couple of really nice bucks coming in to, to my son-in-law's feeder back there so I hope he gets them and not some of these Florida people that come up and hunt and go back home but I'm afraid they may beat him to it but either way just wanted to give y'all an update I am working on prepping which is the faucet here making sure their water works, making sure the repair doesn't leak, letting the babies out, and uh, flooding this little trench that I'm digging so that it'll be a little bit easier to dig in the next few days. And uh, cleaning up the property around the range back there for more training, hopefully, in the near future. The weather's perfect for it, so y'all be safe. Well, I can hear him, and now I can see him. I zoomed in all the way. I know it gets blurry when I do that, but he looks so much further away on camera than he does in real life. He is literally, if he doesn't change course, he's going to fly directly over my house. It's one of those three-wheeled things that look like a goat cart with a blade behind the engine, you know, that pushes it. I don't know what you call a daggum thing. They fly them a lot. Hodges Hobbies is only about five miles from here. And they take off and land from there. Let's see. It's pretty cool, but you'll never catch my butt up that high. God didn't put no wings on my butt when I was born, y'all. Well, came home from work. Did the chores up at the house. Dog, cats, chickens. And I knew my son-in-law, the middle one, had a... Uh, came out here and did some work around the range because he called me this morning looking for fuel for the chainsaw so I'm ex extremely grateful for the help but looks like he brought the mower and blew all the leaves off the range you know what you can expect and uh, raked a little bit up under the new shelter here You can tell if you look close you can tell his rake mark so spend a little time there but he also cut down a couple of small oaks that were off to the edge that i had talked about bringing down because they were never going to be anything good with these 120 foot oak trees around them 
or at least not in my lifetime. So he saved some, looks like he saved some firewood there. But he cut these stumps off with the ground, which is what I told him I was going to do this week. I had already done those two, the one on the side coming in and then this one that was up here in the middle. So they could be driven over without harming a vehicle or tractor or whatever. And I noticed this part of the stump was left. So first thing I did was text him and say, are you hurt? He said, no, sir. <laughs> so I'm like, why? Did you break your chainsaw? Because, <laughs> you know, the, cutting them close to the ground like that, your blade can hit and dull and all that. But anyway, it looks like he cut it in a couple of grooves and cut it off in sections, which was smart. But he said the chain came off and he didn't have his tool with him to put it back on. So he took down that little oak that stood right there in the center of the picture. It's about six inches diameter. And uh, six to eight, probably six. And then he took the top off of that stump. Now, I can't run over it with the lawnmower, of course. But I can definitely drive over it with a vehicle. Because the property line all the way around and back out to the other corner. It's cleared, and uh, a couple weeks ago when my brother, uh, my buddy Bill had my brother's tractor out here, we took the landscape claw thing and moved all the bigger trees that had fallen and limbs and stuff that were in the way, so it's clear now. I could probably drive my Ford around it. I would not try a full jacked up full size Chevrolet or something. But my 93 Ford is more like a mid-size. It's not extended cab or anything. I'd probably drive it around it. I'm, I've driven a Ford Ranger around it. And I've driven my tractor around it. So, I, you know, it's doable. But either way, I just decided I'd come out here and check and see what was going on. Because he didn't tell me he was doing it, but I kind of figured it out. But it looks like he's put a little work in on the range. So... I still need to put some more boards up and some more plywood or OSB for targets up there. So, looks good. I turned the power on when I was walking down. So, I still got to fix where the tractor hit the wire up there, but everything works. It didn't cut the wire, it just broke the pipe. So, I am well pleased. Uh, before my hydraulics on my tractor quit, I would drive it through with the box blade and drag all my trails that go through here and there's a feeder right there on the other side of that tree or on the other side of that tree actually you can just about see the white pipe there and uh then it goes around up to the other little pistol berm and there's a couple of feeders up there and then it goes back down and across that way actually that way but and then comes all the way across this side of the woods so you could actually drive through if you want, if you needed to or wanted to, but I had started walking before it got too hot, trying to build my endurance up around, and I could make three laps in about 15 minutes, and that don't sound like a lot, y'all, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a long walk, especially for somebody that has poor blood circulation. So anyway, I can see through, I can see one of the barrels at one of the other berms over there when we was doing that course. If y'all look right there, there's a barrel. It's hard to tell from here. But anyway, my old deer stand is on that bigger tree right in the middle of the three you see. There's a fourth one back. There's an old deer stand there that I need to either rebuild or tear it down. But anyway... I cut all these bushes down with the machete last week. I was just out here. A little bit of energy to burn. And that tree was a little too big to cut with a machete. But I did anyway. And drug it off. Cut it in a couple pieces and drug it off into the ditch there. That's where we throw all the old junk. And uh, I, eventually I'm going to push that off in there with the backhoe. And fill that side in as well. So. I've got to fix this elbow here that broke. And so it means I gotta unwire it. Then I gotta fix this. And all this pipe is good until you get right there where the tractor pulled it out. So I gotta take the good pipe off 
replace the elbow here and stub it back up into the disconnect and i actually finally we went for a couple years without it but i finally got a weatherproof cover put on there not too long ago <coughs> so nice surprise and you know like i say i figured it out it really wasn't a surprise but i i would much rather be out here with him or anybody that's working because you know one is i enjoy hanging out with all my kids and their spouses and grandkids that it that just makes my day but doing it for me is something you have to just learn to accept that's something they want to do for you and that's hard for a person like me to do but either way guys i'm gonna get off here and i'll probably add to this a little bit later y'all be safe look at sparky up there at the house he's just waiting when i get out of sight he starts barking